Episode 411, I guess episode's a good title. Um, a gift of the feminine is attraction. It's also a curse. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day, certainly for a while now, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I I offer up my my guidance, suggestions, insights, and inspiration. I like to think um, on Facebook Live initially, then onto YouTube, and then onto my uh, podcast. And I do these talks every day called "Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart." And today is number four hundred eleven. Um, seems to be no end in sight. <laughs> As a friend of mine said, in some ways, it's almost like. A, as sanity comes from expressing and sharing it out. And today's topic, today's talk, is inspired from a conversation which I'll get to in a second. The topic is a gift of the feminine is attraction. That's one of the main gifts of the feminine. It's also a curse. And I'm gonna explain it, express it, and show you some steps you can take to change your um, way of doing things. Let's put it that way. All right. So, welcome. Thanks for being with me. And anytime you want to put any comments, questions in the, in below, I'll respond in in the video. If you're doing the replay, I'll comment afterwards. We will swear. Okay, let's do this. So, in conversation with a dear friend of mine last night, <coughs> excuse me. I something she said provoked my response, which was that attraction is a gift from the fellow. She should say a gift of the feminine is attraction, meaning that. Ladies, listen up. One of the strengths you have as a woman when you're in your feminine is the ability to attract what you want. In some ways, the law of attraction was built for the feminine. Even though it's for both genders, it's also both polarities. But And, I'm, and let me qualify quickly. The feminine is primarily polarity, same as the feminine and masculine are polarities. Mas male and female are the genders. However, generally, and I'm using general terms, the feminine lines up with the, with the feet. Women line up with the feminine, men line up with the masculine. There are reverses of that, and there are different versions of that. But in this conversation, I'm talking about women primarily who are in the feminine. And ladies, if you're watching, most of you are, I know, because you're in my audience. Yeah, I'm just checking that. So, a gift of the feminine is attraction. It's also a curse. What do I mean by that? Let me explain. I'm just... Bear with me for a second, I'm just sitting with where I want to bring this in from because I've got some pieces to deliver, but I'm just sitting with where I want to start from with this. Well, let me start from the conversation last night. There we go, that's the easy way to go. Talking to my friend last night, we were going for a walk and, and she mentioned how she was having some challenges with this guy that she's seen. And he's so much what she wants, but glaring, glaringly so, some of the things don't match and it's really troubling her. And I said, the challenge is that you're attracting in what you think what you think you want, but the challenge is you're also getting what you don't want, and that's the curse, in the sense that. Well, let me put, let me let me spin this another way for you, particularly if you're watching this. If you notice that some things in your life are not what you want, in fact, you're getting stuff in your life you really don't want, and you're wondering why the hell it's showing up. That's the curse, because you're attracting indiscriminately. Yes, you're not attracting folk in a way it's focused. This is the thing. The feminine has the ability to attract. That's this gift, that's a power, that's a wonderful um, resource, skill that the feminine has, is to attract. If you don't know what you're attracting, you gotta change what, you're, what your focus is because what's happening is you're attracting in what you're focused on. Attraction isn't indiscriminate. You're attracting in what you're intending. Actually, you're attracting what you think you're intending because this is the thing where it gets a bit mucky. And follow me along with me on this because it might appeal, it might apply to you more effectively as I explain what I mean by this. Is that if you're looking at a certain thing, for example, let me say this: if you are looking for a new car for opportunities, for for example's sake, and you say, "Well, I want to look for what I'm looking for is going to be a white BMW." 5 Series, for example. What you will notice when you're out in the world is a an apparent 
Michelle, Alova, nice to have you in the broadcast. Hi, Rosa. The title is so true. Yes, it is indeed. The title is so true. So you're at look. So you're intending. Let me get back on topic. So you're intending, <laughs> intending that you're looking looking at cars, and you're saying, you know what? It's a white BMW 5 Series. You'll notice quite quickly that you'll start seeing white 5 Series BMWs everywhere. Not not every car, but you'll notice them showing up more frequently than you did before. Now, one reason for this is, or I should say the reason for this is, is that your attraction energy is going up towards that, so it brings it in. The second part is you have a piece in a piece of your brain, yes, a piece of your brain, down near the base called the reticular, reticular activating system, or R-A-T for short. R-A-S, excuse me, no, not RAT, RAS, R-A-S. Reticular activating system. And I'm going to put this in as well, but it's, I'm actually going to need another piece, so there's a two-part, two-pronged approach here. So... You may be aware of this fact. If, if you are a mother, you'll know this for certain. But if you know of other women who are mothers, that you can ask them and you'll find this is true. A mother, with a new, especially with a newborn baby, could be in the other room in the building, in the house, and that baby just rustles in its bed or whimpers in its sleep and should be wide awake immediately, ready to respond in case something happened. Meanwhile, a fire truck could go by and she wouldn't even hear it. The reason for this is the focus or the attraction energy is focused on one thing, which is the safety of the baby. And so the energetic is going to be focused on any change, any condition, something's going to, something happens, going to be there. But something goes by outside, not, not a critical thing, not an awareness. So the reticulated, reticulated, it's a little complicated words here, all these syllables. The reticular activating system is a bundle of nerves at the base of the spine, oh, sorry, base of the, of the brain, at the top of the spine, that is this scanning um, radar detector in a way for what you're looking for. So that's one thing right there. The second part is your attraction ability. And again, the feminine has this gift of attraction. If you know what you want and you're clear on that, and there's nothing in the way of it, and the key thing is nothing in the way of it, I'll get back to that in a second, then you'll start noticing what you're looking for showing up. Be it a car, be it a restaurant you're looking for, be it a certain color of clothing you're looking for. You'll see that out there more overtly. Or more overtly. For example, okay, here's, an experiment. here's something you can do right now. Wherever you are watching this broadcast, if you're outside or in your home, you can do this right now with any effort whatsoever. You may have to take your eyes off the screen though for a second. If I say to you, notice everything around you that is blue, you'll suddenly notice several things around you blue. Maybe the color goes by, or something hanging in the closet, or a piece of furniture, or, or a tablecloth, or if you're outside, maybe it's flowers you notice, or a car, or again, or a car goes by. Now the thing is, what you didn't notice is everything that's yellow. Now, if you, now I'm saying yellow, you're gonna start noticing things that are yellow. Because our radar, our focusing system, is focused on what's being put in. Now I'm offering some suggestions to you to say, look something blue, look something yellow. So that's running for you. You're getting that in your awareness, which is what's working. Now, I'm giving you suggestions. You are giving you instru um, instructions, not suggestions, 24 seven. So this little tracking system at the back here is scanning and scanning and scanning all the time, but it's not always giving you what you want. And this is the curse part. Your intentions, your desires, your wishes, your de declaration statements will manifest. That's the attraction doing its magic. That's kind of the law of attraction in action, what it's doing. Now, if you tell yourself things that aren't what you really want, your system back here doesn't care. It doesn't know what's good or bad. It just knows what you've asked for. So if you say that I'm always, um, I'm always running out of money before my bills are paid, you start attracting that situation. In fact, even if you were getting paid enough, you would only see the picture of not enough because you've told yourself that. And what you tell yourself becomes the law. Now I'm giving you about seven different major truths right now. So you may have to tease these apart in the replay, just to be clear. So first of all, again, you've got this awareness thing that, that will detect what's out there based on what you're looking for. Secondly, you're clear about what you're attracting, but what you state and declare by what you're saying. So be careful what you ask for, because it will show up. At the same time, 
particularly when it's things that are closer to your heartfelt desires. Because the easy stuff, in quotes like finding a parking place or um, being in the grocery store and looking for something you really want and it shows it and it's there because you focus on that, you, you create that. That's great, that's a gift you have, that's a skill you have, works wonderfully. When it comes to relationships though, because this is what I'm speaking to specifically, it's not quite as easy. And the reason why it's not so, why it's so easy is because, first of all, it's not something simple and easy just put out there. Because if you're just saying, I just want to you know, go on a date with anybody, that's easy. And you tend to date anybody, which may not be what you want. But this is the thing. When you want what you really do want, your heartfelt desire that's deep down in your soul and your spirit, what you really want in a relationship, that attraction energy for you ladies works. But if it's not working accurately, and this is your, this is your um, feedback mechanism, if you're out there in the dating world and you're attracting somebody who is 70% of what you want, or 50%, let's make it even, 50% of what you want, they show up with. The other 50% of what they have is not what you want. So they are single, they are monogamous, they are attractive, and they are, um, and they have a nice car. That's four things, just to throw on the table. But they also smoke, which you don't want. They also um, lust after other women. Now, instead of monogamous, but it doesn't mean they have a lot, don't lust after other women, which you don't want either. Um, and they don't treat you like a lady. They don't have the doors for you. They don't, don't we, and you want that. So I'm just giving you a few on each side. So, so you understand that maybe you've got some in the good column and some in the not so good column, but you're attracting that in your life. If this is the case, if you're not getting exactly what you want, it's clear that you're attracting everything, as I mentioned at the beginning, that you attract everything. Some of it's what you want, some of it's the curse. <laughs> so understanding that you have this array of things showing up, and it's not all what you want, is feedback. Meaning that when you look at that and go, this isn't what I really wanted, some of it is, some of it's not, then the, the understanding is something inside is out of alignment. And it's making sense. This is a fundamental piece of the work, is that you have to have a... Um, uh, how do I say this? You have to have a willingness to look at your own experience, just to be clear. So when you are reflecting on your own experience, your own history, your own relationship paradigms, and they're not lining up what you want, do some self-investigation. If you don't care and you find what you got, go right ahead, have fun, enjoy your life, and just enjoy. Just be clear about it. But if you want something more than just okay dates, where it's 50% of what you want, 50% of what you don't want, listen up. This is where the thing get, this is where it gets real, where the rubber meets the road as it were. Hang on, I'm just looking at how to, how to jump into this because this, this is this is the this is the, the, the payoff. This is the <laughs> this is the big bit, which for those people watching you may understand. So here's the thing. First of all, as I mentioned, what you say tends to happen, so watch what you're saying out loud and listen to what you're thinking inside as well. Because both of those are influencing what you're choosing in relationship. Both of them vividly are. But more than that, in addition to that, is what's happening down inside, down in the depths, in your internals, in your, down in the caverns of your, of your mind, as it were. What you're thinking and what you're saying out loud are your conscious mind doing its thing, which is fairly overt, fairly understandable, fairly clear. But at the same time, underneath your conscious mind is a thing called the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is not something you're not usually aware of because, you're, like for example, when you're driving down the freeway, you're going to go, go driving home, you may get home without even realizing how you got there. Let's just say your subconscious mind knows how to drive and will take care of you. I'm not saying you should always trust it that way, but the reality is when you're driving somewhere or you're doing something, you suddenly realize 10 minutes later you weren't even aware of what's happening, but you got there anyway. That's your subconscious mind taking care of you which it will do if you do the right things with it. How does that apply to relationships, you may be wondering to yourself? Well, I'll explain. <laughs> I've talked about these, this before in other broadcasts and other talks about this, but I want to give you this spin because I want to make sure you understand the power you have and also the curse that you're carrying if you don't change it. So, first of all, your... Um, subconscious that I mentioned is really your um, imagine it's kind of like your diary or your journal from when you were a kid 
Everything happening in your life, you were making notes and writing things down. Now, you weren't doing that physically necessarily, but you're definitely doing it in your subconscious mind, back in midbrain. And so it's your recording, written, documented, record, um, videotaped, however you want to describe it. Videotaped, that's such an old term. Um, and stuck into your subconscious memory. And if you want the science of this, from uh, Bruce Lipton, who wrote The Biology of Belief, he says that basically from the age of zero to about the age of five or six, I think he's around that six or seven, give or take, and I'm not a scientist, he is, so I trust his word on this. Um, he says that up until that age, our conscious mind, which is really the part of it that has volition and choice and also kind of a gatekeeper that simply discerns and defines what we take in, isn't online yet. We are running around with a subconscious mind wide open to the world, taking in everything around us, writing everything down, going, oh, that's cool, that's interesting, that's interesting, including, key part, everything we watch the adults around us do. We, wa we, we watch what they do and go, that must be the way it is. We watch what they say, that must be the way it is. And we, write, we make notes, basically. Imagine taking a diary if you were just recording the whole of your life when you were three or four years old. Now, you weren't writing that point, but your subconscious is taking notes quite happily and accurately, too. And it's taking those notes based on what the, it observes and witnesses and sees out there going, oh, that's how that goes, and that's how that works, and this is what they do. Now, depending upon your upbringing, this could be good news or not so good news. And I had a good upbringing. It still wasn't absolutely good news for me, so, I, so I'll articulate that in a moment. So fast forward to being an adult. You now have been out dating for a while, and you know this thing, if you look back at your past relationships, a certain common experience that doesn't work, a certain pattern that goes, that wasn't what I wanted. It was close, but it wasn't what I wanted. That little close but not what you wanted is a powerful indicator of what you need to look at. Because when you see that, for example, um, maybe the man you were dating is, using one of the ones I talked about, um, he's letching after other women. He's, he's lusting after other women. He's loyal to you, but he's always looking at other women, for example. If you look back at your childhood, and you have to do this carefully because you may be seeing it through a different lens than you actually have been looking through up till now, but if you dig deep in your memories and you ask for the truth inside, again, subconscious recalls the truth, and look about how you observe your father and your mother when you were kids, maybe you see something in the way they relate to each other where his eyes strayed, his vision strayed, his intentions strayed away from your mother. And there was this concern, it wasn't because he wasn't cheating on your mother, at least not that you know about, but maybe he was noticing other women more than he should based on what you thought was right as a four-year-old. You've wired up in your recording, in your journaling of your history of your parents, and, the, and it's true of parents, are not just, sorry, it's not true just about your parents, it's true about your, your adults around you, even older siblings, because they demonstrate this too. They model for you how love, our relationship looks, as well as other things too, but in this context, talking about relationship. So, I'm bringing this together, I think I'm bringing this together. <laughs> as an adult, you are out and dating, and you're noticing things aren't working out quite so well. And as I mentioned, for example, if that was one thing that was going on with the guys you kept you were going out with, and these are the ladies, and guys, if you're watching this, flip the script. I mean, women, you, you go out with women the same way, that would, would be a certain off track than on track. But for the ladies who are watching this in particular, I'm speaking to you, since you're my primary audience. When you look out there and you look at the men you've been out with and see the common threads of what didn't work, you'll be able to track it back, almost guaranteed, almost guaranteed, back to an experience you have memorized when you were four years old, or five, or three, or two, whatever that was. And until that's changed, until the wiring has changed, because it is changeable, just so you know, your future choices in relationship won't change. Unless this changes, that won't change. It's a it's a one-to-one a -one relationship, basically. So as much as you may say, well, I'm gonna go choose something different, I'm gonna find something different, I'll be fine. Well, you may go on the dating apps or go to a meet up instead and just try something different and you may meet somebody who looks totally different to the person you were with before. But I pretty much guarantee you, if you're not that one to the next one, that within time that experience of that relationship will be exactly the same as the previous one. And you'll be back where you started with the upset of going, this is not what I wanted. So, how to fix this? Because if you're with me so far you may have resonated with this and got some sense of your own experience. The way to resolve this, as I mentioned briefly, is the wiring that you put in, the programming, the notes that you made in your journal, need to be rewritten. Because 
that young experience influences massively your adult. Um, let me rephrase that. That young memory, that's better, that recording influences your adult experiences, massively so. So most of us walking around the planet, you can look around in the world and see this, it's kind of funny to watch in a strange sort of way. You can look around and see most people walking down the street. You have to imagine and understand this, that all those adults walking down the street, driving their cars, on television, in the markets, wherever you go, are basically adult bodies driven by four-year-olds. Now imagine that for a second. And if you ever saw uh, Men in Black, there was a couple of scenes in the first movie where they found these aliens that were little tiny people inside of human bodies. That's the way I imagine it. It's kind of a crazy thought. But if you understand this, you get to see why people wait, act the way they do. So once you realize this, and I'm not saying you need to see it visually, but if you just imagine this, that all these adult people walking around with these four-year-old drivers inside, you wonder why they do stupid things. This is why. Because our wiring is installed at an early age, and it's a very interesting development of, of evolution, maybe, I don't know, where we get imprinted very early on, and that first five, six years of life is where we learn everything about life we're gonna learn, basically. And then after that, we have, to, we have a hard time staking things, taking things in. When kids are four, three or four years old, their ability to learn languages is much more, more effective than they are as when they're 15, 16, or 25, 26. So that's where the learning happens quickest. It's also where you can do the changing. And if you're looking to change your relationship paradigm, if you're looking to change the way you attract the partnership, and you're looking for a way to do it effectively so you don't keep dating the wrong sort of partner, then Going back and rewriting that that diary or that history, those 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 circuits inside from when you were four or five years old, is your priority. That's your focus. Now, how you do that? Let me say it this way: How I do it with my client, just so you know, to tra to um, expose my skill set in a way, or expose what I do, is largely what happens with my clients is we go back and we do what I would call a blend of a resolution of memory and an integration of the different parts. It's actually taken from different parts of teachings, but what it really is a blend of is how to go back, rewrite the history, and then incorporate that in a way that works for you. Because the other thing is, is that that four-year-old, equivalent that memory of you had carrying around, is doing its best to make you safe. I mean, it, its drivers are safety and comfort for you. And if it's not what you really want, then Stopping it doing that isn't going to work because it, it focuses on what it's meant to be doing. So what, it ha what has to be done is to go back and change what it's, how it's doing, excuse me, changing its how so that it still delivers safety and comfort but actually works in alignment with where you want to go. And it's the wonderful thing. It can be done. <laughs> I experienced this when I went through a master's program, which is why I use these skills in my coaching. And if you find someone who can help you with this, go for it. I highly recommend what I offer because I've been there and done that and know how to do it. But it comes back to is to really have the understanding that your younger memories are malleable. You can change them to align with what you want to go through, but ignoring them, suppressing them, or fighting with them isn't going to work, period. The only way you're going to get what you really want in life, to attract what you really want as an adult, is to have everything inside from zero years to now in alignment. And this is the thing. The power of attraction is innate in the feminine, as I mentioned at the beginning. You have the ability to attract what you really want. It's a gift, and it can be a curse if it's not what you really want. That's why I was talking about gift and curse. If you're not getting what you want in areas of life, be it business, be it relationship, be it health, then those things are areas you want to focus on changing the wiring inside so that as an adult you can benefit from them and enjoy everything in life that you want. Now, if it's already working for you, awesome then you, you, you may not need to do anything deeper than just enjoying what you've been doing. But if some reason life aren't working, I can guarantee you that a lot of times it comes from this wiring inside. Because the power we have is influenced largely by who we were when we were kids. Now, how you do that is up to you. I mean, there are plenty of books out there. There are, there are trainings, retreats. There's a master's program that I, used to, that I did that's longer around, I'm sorry, that will teach you how to do this in two years. Um, I work faster than that with my clients because I already know the skills. But this is the thing, it's a choice. If you want to go ahead the way you're doing it and enjoy life the way it is, awesome. Enjoy everything you want. If you want more of life, if you want to go deeper and have what you really want in your heart, 
your heartfelt dreams come true and have amazing experiences in a relationship and love, that's when it's good to get someone to support you. I was talking to my friend last night about this, about even, even a good coach has to have a good coach because none of us, and I'm talking about all the coaches in the world, are perfect and we've always got more to learn. If a coach has stopped learning, they're no good to you, they're dying, as in they're shutting down. So for us as coaches, we're always learning and growing. And so if you want to grow in life, you do the same thing as you find a coach that can support you where you want to go. This is part of the, the secret to success in life. Um, that was a little plug for coaching entirely. So bottom line, let's, let's finish this talk off, shall we? So you have the power of attraction, particularly in the feminine. Now men, we can access the attraction as well. It's a matter of dropping into a feminine energetic and we do that on a, a meditation, we do that in other places. It's a skill set we all have, but women are more naturally inclined towards it. That's why I'm speaking more to the women, just so you know where I was going with this. To actually take the time to get clear about what you want. Now you can do this as an experiment, by the way. This, yeah, just a, it's an idea for an experiment. If you want to just, if you're not sure if this is working for you or not working for you, get clear about what you want, whether it's a vision board or writing down a list about what you really want to attract in your life, particularly in one area. It could be a relationship, it could be a car, it could be whatever it is and then see what happens. If you keep getting almost but not quite, that's, a fee that's feedback. If you get exactly what you want, that's feedback. It's all a learning curve and all feedback. But if you're getting, if you know from experience already that the last three relationships, four relationships, two relationships are not what you wanted, even though you know what you thought you want, but it's not lining up, this is what will help, will help you. And as a um, invitation, because I wanna make sure I do offer my services, is I do offer a thing called a discovery session. It's a gift, a free consult, clarity conversation I call it, 30 minutes where we can talk and I can see help, see where you are and help you get some guidance where you wanna go. And if it lines up to work together, if it lines up to work together, I'll tell you about that too. So that is my uh, invitation. Um, but if you wanna do the homework first and just see where your choices are going, that's good to get to know what you're up to. But if you already know that's not working, don't wait another minute. Get the support you deserve, get the support you need, get the help you really want. Oh, how you can find out what I can, how, can, how you can get one of those, those, those free gifts, on my website, which is my name, barryselby.com. On the left-hand side of the, on the menu is a button that says, let's chat. That's literally a button you click on and it takes you a little form you fill out. I think it's, cal it's calendar first, then a form, and then you sign up, and then I'll, I'll get back to you when, it, when we talk. And that's a gift from me to you. Um, I hope this has given you some ideas, some thoughts, and some understanding about what in fact will work and what doesn't work. This is a big piece of the work, and it's one of those things that I talk about different ways, but I want to make sure it landed for you, because frankly, if you haven't heard this before, it's time. This is a transformati transformative opportunity, and if you want to do the work, then get the help you need to make it work for you. You deserve the best. You deserve what you really want. But it's not always... Um, simple one, two, three step process. It does require sometimes some detours and some revel and some rewriting of code. <laughs> Simple technical terms on it. So um, having said that, this is my Facebook Live and if you're watching this on YouTube, this is the replay. If you're listening on, on my podcast, it's also a replay. So just so you know where you find this stuff, this is my daily Facebook Live, number 411, and it lives on my business page, on, which is Barry Selby, the author, as well as on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, the playlist is Message from the Masculine, and also now showing up on iTunes under the Message from the Masculine podcast. So you can listen to these when you're driving, um, riding, working at the gym, whatever you want to do. And my personal page is where they are right now, and you can always catch me here. 5 p.m. Pacific time is my broadcast time, my usual time of doing this. This is um, this is every day. So yes, tomorrow will be number 412. Um, we'll see what happens then. But this talk, topic, I hope, was landed for you, give you some insights, some support. Any questions or comments you want to provide after I sign off, I'll respond in the comments afterwards. And um, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me. And I hope this has been of value to you. I will see you again tomorrow with the number 400, 412. And uh, who knows what that will be. If you have any questions, comments, or in fact, if you've got any topic ideas, let me know those too. Send me over social media, and that may give me some inspiration for tomorrow's topic. And I hope this has been of help to you. So thank you very much. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.